As we close another year, it's time to look back at what was and what might be in 2024, especially when it comes to technology where evolution is a constant. Today, I want to spend the last time uh, a video on Bruno, our chosen REST client alternative, and explore five key areas for its evolution in 2024. Looking back at our journey with Bruno, it's clear that it has potential. But there are also areas that need refinement. And we'll dissect these areas to envision a more powerful, user-friendly Bruno in 2024. We are going to explore five areas where Bruno needs enhancement to become more user-friendly, especially for non-developers. Whether you are a seasoned developer or just starting, understanding these areas will help you better navigate and utilize Bruno in your projects. Trust me, you don't want to miss area five, which is a crucial one. Let's first talk about migrations. Migrations are a crucial element right now when a lot of people are trying to move over from Insomnia or Postman. And with this, not everything needs to be supported, but expectations need to be clearly set. While importing from Postman or from OpenAPI v3 specs, you might notice or not notice that some elements are missing. Let's try to import, for example, an OpenAPI v3 spec into Postman. And then by comparison, let's try to import it into Bruno. You'll notice elements like pass variables, sample requests and responses, they are missing because Bruno doesn't support that right now, which is okay, but you need to be transparent about that. So either before importing, give some sort of error message uh, saying something like, hey, we support importing these elements, other ones might not be supported. So Bruno needs to improve its migration transparency perhaps with a detailed log of imported elements. This clarity will save users from tedious manual checks. So it needs a clear indicator. What is imported, what is not. At best up front, but if not, some sort of log after the import. It's not about supporting everything, but it's about setting the right expectations and reducing the hassle of manual checks and frustration. Next up, let's discuss interface inconsistencies. Area number two. There are elements right now which are inconsistently displayed in the interface. Let's take, for example, variables. Variables, and with that I mean, for example, environment variables, which are replaceable in your requests, are shown throughout the interfaces, but there are areas where they are supported yet not shown. For example, if you create a new request in that modal that pops up, where you define the URL, you are not able to see the uh, variables, neither their substitutes. While in other areas, such as the variables themselves, you're able to see variables within variables and see their substitution values, but in there, substitution is not supported. So you're misled thinking that you could nest variables, which right now in the current version is not yet in. So these inconsistencies lead you down the wrong path. And if you don't take much time with Bruno, this might be dangerous because it again sets expectations that are not fulfilled. Another sample of that are authorizations. If you have an authorization on a collection level, it is not visible in the individual request, leading to potential confusion if you didn't set up that con uh, collection and if you're new to Bruno. So you might wonder why is it working, shouldn't be protected, which it is, but on a different level, not indicating that it is taken over into this individual request. Also, there are other issues. For example, if you try to rename something containing a slash, which doesn't work, you are simply not getting an error message right now. It's just not working. And there is another quirk. If you have an imported collection, which has a folder name or request name longer than 50 characters, it works up on import. But if you try to rename it in the user interface, that doesn't work. You're limited to 50 characters, which are just inconsistencies which either should already fail up front, so it shouldn't be possible at all, or which should be possible also via the interface. These inconsistencies not only hinder usability, but also affect Bruno's reliability. And a more uniform and error indicative interface would greatly enhance the user experience. And this is something where you can already potentially spend a little bit of technical depth crouching in, and this is something, if Bruno doesn't fix that up front, it might pile up. The third area I want to speak about is the overall user experience with Bruno's user interface. Current limitations can be challenging, especially for non-developers. 
Features like variable auto-completion, multi-selection for organizing requests, and multi-close of opened requests are absent, making the interface less intuitive than it could be. Especially something like the uh, variable auto-completion would be really helpful for new members joining in working on your collection. Also, the lack of an auto-updater, or at least some sort of indicator to your version is out of date, is a quite significant gap. Not everybody is involved enough into Bruno to regularly check the homepage. And if you start working with a group of people, everybody having different versions, and you first need to check which version are you, by the way, using, it is quite a hassle. Besides uh, that, some sort of indication of, hey, there is an update to a collection you're using, or on whatever level the Git repository has been initialized, that's another challenge to think about. But some sort of, there have been changes to the collections you're using or the requests you're using would be really helpful for non-tech savvy users because let's be honest, not everybody's a developer going into Visual Studio Code seeing, hey, there have been some updates on that Git repo. Just something to think about for 2024 from my perspective. Other elements with regards to user experience, especially thinking about other user groups, are things like some sort of meta grouping. Let's think about something like workspaces in Postman. Because I know people working in QA having round about 20 different systems they're working with, different potentially APIs from different teams within these systems. Are they supposed to have like 40 collections in Bruno visible at all times? Consultants are working with different companies, potentially not wanting to show the APIs used for one company when moving to another one and working for them. So it would be really nice to have some sort of meta object which groups collections. Then there are elements in the interface that could be improved. Let's be honest, file uploads or a request history, both of that is still solvable via scripts. But is that a good user experience? I doubt it. I would recommend to really focus on things that are not one-time activities, which are potentially possible right now, but which are quite a hassle for non-technical users. because. Let's be honest also with that request. Do you want to have that in the repo that you're potentially then putting into Git? I don't know. Something to think about. From my perspective, just not the best user experience right now. Also saving, uh, as we've seen in that import um, of the OpenAPI v3 spec, request response cycles as some sort of samples for this has worked. This is an error message. This is how a body looks like. Would be really helpful for documentation purposes because not everything fits into that Markdown tab. And if I'm working on a request, how often do I switch to a Markdown tab checking if somebody has changed something? Another thing to think about is the naming of requests. Right now, multiple different HTTP methods with the same name are not possible. But if I name my request tasks, it should be clear from task delete and task get that these are different requests that I'm doing. It shouldn't be necessary that I'm naming the request if I already gave it the HTTP method of delete to do delete and to do get. This is somewhat redundant and might be improved. Implementing these features would not only make Bruno more accessible, but also more efficient. And enhancing the UI UX, from my perspective, should be a top priority for 2024. My fourth area addresses the need for folder level properties. Currently, Bruno's approach is too broad, lacking context-specific controls. And the lack of granularity can be limiting when working across different systems or projects or even within one API, but testing different scenarios. Having the ability to apply different settings at a folder level would provide much needed flexibility and context. If you have two different contexts, such as a technical connection and an actual user connection, right now, you would, for example, set the user connection at collection level and then would need to overwrite each single request of that technical connection. Or you're doing it another way around and you set up two collections, but then you need to maintain two different collections again. So both of them are not optimal. And Bruno could introduce a more nuanced control at the folder level, allowing for better organization and management of diverse collections. But then again, thinking about the earlier areas, the interface would need to respect that properly. So if you now have the possibility to have folder level authentication, collection level authentication, 
and request level authentication. You need to know what applies. So you need to know where these uh, are coming from. So this would require work on the user interface itself as well. Finally, and most important to me, let's discuss area five. Let's discuss Bruno's integration with Git for version control or its file-based doc. Bruno has one benefit. Everything is on a file system and it is dogmatic in a way that it should be checked into version control. But right now I've got the feeling that it is not thought through everywhere. The current setup, from my perspective, might introduce clutter where it doesn't want to. Every minor change in a request right now potentially leads to a file change, cluttering your version history, especially working with non-developers. So I would propose a few changes or think about a few areas. For example, like path variables that we have seen in Postman and other API tools. So introduce the possibility to have variables within path, within query and potentially at other areas, which can be set with a sample, with a description, and then with an actual runtime value. That runtime value being either, for example, propagated via a pop-up where you are asked to enter it with a default value, or which can be supplied from a precursor request, so programmatically. This would allow you to save these values at another place, not in the file system itself, or at least not at a place that is synced to the repository. And therefore, not every single change from anybody accessing your collection and syncing back to GitHub would potentially lead to a change, and it would not clutter your change history within Git. On top of that, introduce a sort of template system for example, for post bodies, so that you can separate the static contents and the dynamic contents and somehow give these dynamic contents a description and a sort of uh, sample value. So that also for these bodies, not every change in a body is leading to a file change and therefore leading to a change in the version history, because I don't care if the users create that to-do item with the text of one, two, three, four, or testing it or something else. I care if the fundamental structure of that request has changed and if I need a different fundamental structure. This plays a little bit into the notion of also the sort of saving request and response cycles, because also that could help explaining elements. And if you type it somehow, you could maybe derive the templates out of that. But this is something which I think is quite severe because right now everybody has changes, for example, the URL or the um, body of a post or put request. And if everybody really checks that in, yeah, have fun. Doesn't really look helpful to me. So the idea of dynamic values, the static template for me would help removing unnecessary Git commits and unnecessary changes and would even describe the requests we are doing potentially better. On the whole area of that, also a guidance on the repository setup would be helpful. Right now, at least in the companies I'm working with, we have collections in one repository grouped by project. But if somebody right now would change a folder name within that repository, I think it would break for every user because if I've seen it correct, the link is to the specific file path also the secrets are linked this way. So if somebody changes the folder name in the repo and you pull it, it might break the collection for you and you need to re-enter and re-import. So also on that level, I think we need to come up with a better solution or at least with some sort of guidelines indicating to users how should they use it. If we're going for collection level repositories, that might be a lot of repositories. If we are going with groupings and let's call it just hiding the collection somewhere in your repositories, then how the heck does it work if somebody renames a folder? How are you able to simply change the file path, for example, without needing to re-import everything? These are just elements where we need to think about how we can do that because enhancing the Git integration and request management would significantly boost Bruno's usability and especially if we're doing that in a way which is also workable for non-developers because right now I doubt that a lot of people not involved into development deeply will really know how to do it, how to do it properly. And especially in large teams or more complex projects, it is quite likely that not that deeply technical people will want to use the APIs to at least get some sort of sense of 
what their teams are working. Now I'd like to hear your thoughts. Which of these points resonate with you? Where do you think I got it wrong? What improvements would you like to see in Rune? As a wrap up, remember technology grows when we share our insights and feedbacks. From my perspective, these five areas, interface inconsistencies, migration challenges, UI UX limitations, folder level controls, and the Git integration are critical for Bruno's growth in 2024. If you found this discussion enlightening, smash that like button, subscribe for more tech insights, and share your thoughts in the comments. Let's shape the future of Bruno together. In the next video, I'll probably step away from REST clients in Bruno, and I'll focus again on some sort of SAP technology topic or Obsidian, so some mode taking topic. Subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. And with that, thank you for joining me in this insightful journey. Keep exploring, keep innovating. Until next time, Tobias signing off. Stay curious and continue learning.